As you may know, Gmail is rolling out a major update that's going to impact pretty much, well, every business out there. And that's why in this video, I wanted to give you a full walkthrough of everything that you need to know, the ultimate guide to survive the upcoming Gmail changes. So what exactly is happening? Well, although Gmail may call it new Gmail protection for a safer, less spammy inbox, what it actually means for pretty much every business out there is that you'll need to change the way you send emails. You need to actually make some changes in order to make sure your emails will still end up in Gmail. And if you're thinking, well, but I'm not using Gmail, doesn't matter because your audience is. If you're sending any kind of email, whether that is reply to customer support or email newsletter or even cold email, like you'll need to prepare for those changes. So what exactly does all this mean? Well, they've actually prepared a full debrief and I'll share the link in the descriptions down below with all the guidelines that starting February, 2024, you'll need to follow. And inside this document, they have one different shader which is gonna impact to what extent you or your business is gonna be affected because they have certain requirements that apply to everyone. Everyone who's sending emails to A or multiple Gmail addresses, but also they have different requirements for people or businesses that are sending over 5,000 emails per day. And if you think that doesn't apply to you, you have to think about like it, it includes every single email that's being sent from your domain name. So if you're sending out an email newsletter, boom, every time you send an email to more, more than 5,000, it means you apply. If you have a big team that's using, I don't know, Google Workspace or any other platform and they send out a lot of emails, boom. If you, if you send a lot of email replies on your customer support desk, boom, all that is included. And that means that for a lot of business, you are even at least at some days, you're going to have to follow the requirements for sending over 5,000 emails per day. And if you don't, well, then Gmail is gonna eat up all your emails and you're not gonna get into the inbox. So what are those requirements? What's actually required? Well, there's a couple of things that you'll need to implement, which is called SPF, standing for the Sender Policy Framework, Dekey IM, which stands for Domain Keys Identify Mail Description, and DMARC, which stands for Domain Based Message Authentication. And rather than me trying to explain these specific things, I've actually, I'll actually link to this video from Google itself that will explain in just one or two minutes exactly what those are. But more importantly, you'll need to know what you actually do with those. Essentially, these three are all there to make sure Gmail can actually verify who has sent the email, right? So just to make sure that if you're sending an email from yourdomain.com, that it's actually you sending it from yourdomain.com and nobody else could send that email, right? And that means you'll need to essentially whitelist the servers that you're sending it from, right? If you're sending from emails from your support desk, you need to whitelist. If you're sending out emails from your broadcast using your domain name, you need to whitelist that. Like that's essentially what those three are for. And in terms of like how to set that up, or that's the most important part, I'll get to that. Another important requirement for everyone sending more than 5,000 people is that you also need to support one-click unsubscribe links, which essentially means that people can just unsubscribe with a single click and you know they don't have to go through a form or anything like that. Now, this is typically something that will be done by the platforms that you're using. So if you're using ActiveCampaign, MailChimp, et cetera, et cetera, those should support that. But it's still good to double check if you actually, you know, if that's actually the case. And then perhaps the single most important one that, you know, this is something that is not just a one-time setup and forget thing, but something you'll have to just embrace ongoing for as long as you're sending out emails is that you need to make sure that you need to keep spam rates below 0.3%. And in case you're sending out more than 5,000 messages, the reported, and I'll show you that in just a little bit, the reported spam rates below 0.1% here in, in Google Postmasters. If you don't do that, if you send out too much spam or too many people click the spam button, then boom, poof, Gmail will just eat your emails and you won't land in the inbox. Obviously, I got some tips up my sleeve to help you lower this spam rate and get more of your emails into the actual email inbox. And although there are listed more requirements here, those are essentially the main requirements that you need to comply with before February, 2024. So how do you actually prepare for all of this? The first thing to check is whether you currently are sending emails from your own domain name. And in case you're quick to reply, yes, I am already sending it from my email. You know, me being a silly Dutchie, I thought the same thing until I realized I actually wasn't. I just, I kind of was, but I wasn't completely. And I'll show you an example, right? So what you'll need to do is just send an email. Like if you have a Gmail account, that's what I use. So it's just easiest that way. If you, have, uh, if you have a broadcast or a newsletter, send an email to your own Gmail address, right? Just to, to see what's happening. Here, I actually have two examples. There's just a random newsletter I received in the past. And if you've received your email from yourself, right? This is from a guy called K. Peng Joon. He's apparently mailing from his domain name, smobble.com. But if I click on this little icon right here, right? I actually see that it is mailed by Infusion Mail, assigned by Infusion Mail. So even though it might seem he's sending up from a domain name, Exactly not. Like, and if this is you, if this is 
this domain name is different compared to what this domain name is. This means you're actually not sending it from your own domain name. You actually have, you know, it's kind of like sending from your own domain name, but the actual email is being sent from this domain name, which means it also uses the reputation from this domain name. And this is something you need to change so that every, this and mailed by and signed by has to be all the same domain name or a subdomain, but at least your own domain name. So here's another example of someone who has already changed this. So right here, you'll see an email from digitalmarketer.com right here. And you'll also see signed by digitalmarketer.com. Same domain name. So this is good. In case this is different for you, it means that you still need to set this up. In that case, reach out to your email autoresponder and ask them how to set this up because this is different for every email autoresponder. Assuming you're already sending emails from your own domain name, you need to check whether you've actually set up the DKM, SPF, et cetera, already set up. And the easiest way to do is actually these two tools. One is MX Toolbox. You just enter yourdomainname.com. You just select DMARC right here, for example, and you would enter yourdomain.com. Well, in this case, that's not going to work. But an even easier way to do is, is actually this tool called Mail Tester. Again, I'll drop the link in the show notes. And what this will do is it will generate an email address, right? And what you need to do is send from your email autoresponder, whatever tool you're using, send an email to this email address, and then just click here. Check your score. You can do this for free a couple of times a day, but it'll actually show you whether you have whether you have set up everything correctly or whether there's still an issue. Once you have a better understanding of what your current situation is, we can go to uh, to step number two, which is to configure the requirements, right? Which means to set up SPF, DKM, et cetera, et cetera. This is typically done at either where you've registered your domain names, like GoDaddy or whatever, or at your hosting party. Like personally, I'm a big fan of Cloudflare. This is where I do everything like this. I'll drop a link to like a guide on how to set this up. Because again, this is quite techy, requires some back and forth. So I'll, sh I'll drop a link in the show notes as well. But even when you've set all of that up, like the most important and something that, you know, you'll have to work on ongoing is to build your own domain reputation. Because especially if before you were sending emails, essentially not from your own domain name, but just using your domain name from your email autoresponder, just like the example I just showed you, like when you are just switching to your own domain name, this means that right now you need to build up your reputation because Gmail is going to look at your domain name and assign a certain reputation to it, right? It's going to assess whether, you know, you have good quality emails or whether they're poor. And if it thinks you're sending out poor emails, then guess what? Your emails are going into spam, right? So especially if you're just starting out, sending out emails from your own domain and the worst thing you can do is just like switch over to your own domain name and just send out a a mega blast of like 100,000 emails to your email list, for example, like that would go to spam and you will think like you're the worst essentially, right? So you need to build up your domain reputation, essentially warm up your domain. And this is essentially a practice that will, you know, where we're just going to slowly send out more emails, first of all, to your most engaged leads, the people that are actually following you, that are clicking on every email, and then slowly to, you know, the less engaged leads, right? So essentially, this is not an exact science, but like if you're, if you're warming up your domain name, if you're new to sending out emails from this domain name, something you could follow is like on the very first day, send, you know, max between 500 and 3,000 emails, just give or take, right? So like a thousand emails or so to your most engaged lead. The, the people, again, that are eating your emails up, that are loving them. And then the next day you send out a little bit more, like two and a half thousand, three thousand, max seven and a half thousand, which is in that kind of ballpark. Then afterwards, you review if your, your open rates are still solid, if there's any issue, because if there is an issue, if like people are just not opening them, then obviously you should, check what's under the hood before continuing. But assuming everything is good, you just continue with that pace. And slowly, bit by bit, you just start to increase how many emails um, you send out. Again, obviously, so for some people, this doesn't even apply because you have an email list that's much smaller. But this is really for those, if you have a bigger email list, like how, do, like rather than just sending out a big blast, you want to warm up your reputation, warm up your domain first, right? And something that's very important to do is to go to postmaster.google.com. If you go in here, you can add your domain name right here in the bottom right. This way, you can actually get insights from how Google perceives your domain name. You can actually see what are your, you know, your how many people click the uh, the spam button. Not exactly how many people, but like the overall the spam score, right? And this is the score inside this dashboard. You need to keep it be below 0.1%. The official minimum is 0.3, but they literally state inside Postmaster, it should be below 0.1. So if you are currently sending out emails and you're getting a spam score higher than 0.1, then you know, you need to make adjustments. You need to make a change before February 1st, 2024. And that's also why I wanted to share some tips to improve your deliverability, right? To improve your reputation and also just, you know, the way people engage with your emails, right? Some of these are going to be open doors, like they're going to be super obvious. And some of them are things that you may not have done before. And the first thing is that something I've always had second thoughts on is to use double opt-in, right? But with this change, it could be more important than ever that you, you know, get 
real consent, like not just legal consent, but like people actively subscribe and just have a bit of a barrier before people enter your email list so that you have, you know, a higher entrance uh, fee essentially, and therefore more engaged people going forward. Also, you want to proactively remove unengaged leads. So when people don't open your emails or click your links, like remove them, right? Literally after 60 days or so, when people haven't responded for a while, I send them a couple of emails automatically. You can do this with pretty much every autoresponder these days, but I send them an email to essentially say like, hey, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm going to remove you from my list. Like you could have one chance left or a couple of chances, a couple of emails left to say, yes, I want to uh, keep on receiving these emails. If they don't click, apparently they're not engaged anymore. They're not reading it. So boom, I'll just delete them from the list. But you don't just do that based on email engagement, essentially. What, you all, what I also highly recommend is to clean your list using an email verification tool. There's a lot of these tools out there online uh, that automatically check, like if you just export all your, your full list of leads, right? And you input them into a tool like that. It will just go through like, hey, which of those email addresses are still valid, right? A tool that I've used is called Email List Verify, but there's plenty of other tools out there as well. And there's one neat trick I have to share with you because, you know, a bit recently, Gmail, if you had a Gmail account, like any of your subscribers who had a Gmail account, all the old accounts, they were still, essentially, they were still valid, right? But only recently, Gmail started to remove all the old Gmail accounts that just people created but never logged in anymore. So all those Gmail accounts are now empty, gone, they don't exist anymore, right? And although Google doesn't officially say that, it's, you know, we can sort of assume that they're going to use that as like a trigger to say like, hey, if people are still sending emails to those Gmail accounts, which haven't been around for years, that's a bad sign. And then every time when you send out an email, like when you send out a broadcast email to your email list, for example, you want to make sure that you test the email. And what I mean with testing is actually two things, right? I always use two tools every time I send out an email because sometimes I just write an email and there's certain words inside that are completely relevant. But for some reason, it just, it, based on the words, Gmail or any other tool will just flag it as spam. So the first thing I always use is mail test. I already showed you that before. So just to make sure that there's nothing wrong with the email, right? So you open the you open this website, you copy this email, you send an email to it, and then you hit and check the score to see if there's anything worth improving in the email. The second tool I always use is gmas.co slash inbox. Again, this is free. What you need to do is just send your email out to these email addresses. Then afterwards you hit your, you enter your domain name right here in this search bar. And you would actually see for all of these different Gmail boxes, whether your emails are going into the spam or into the primary or into the, into the promotion folder, right? These are actually Gmail accounts that just, that you're sending your email into. And this tool lets you see like, where is this actually going? And that way you can actually see like, Hey, wait a second. My, my emails are going into spam. Why is that? And maybe you make some changes to the email and boom, until you actually get it to go to the inbox. It's actually a really powerful tool. And also this is obvious. But also make sure these days like to segment your emails with the right tag and make sure that you sort of know like what your email list is into. What are they into? What are they not into? So you can send out more relevant emails to the right person rather than just like blasting your emails out to everyone. And just in case you weren't already doing this, make unsubscribing extremely easy. They don't do anything dodgy where you have a small font or like make it to like grayed out. It needs to be very obvious because again, you want people, especially with the update, you want people to unsubscribe rather than click the spam button. And here's one really important part. I've seen people do this where they have like multiple email lists. And when someone unsubscribes, they're unsubscribed from that list. In fact, a lot of these tools, a lot of the autoresponder tools like ActiveCampaign and whatnot have this as a standard setting is that if you are, if you unsubscribe from that particular list, but here's the thing going forward, Gmail is going to check. Like if someone actually unsubscribes, and if you then keep on sending emails, that is a bad thing. But what happens if someone is on two of your lists, they click the unsubscribe button and they only unsubscribe from that one particular list that you happen to send emails from. That's going to be an issue. And that's why when someone clicks the unsubscribe button, you want to make sure that you just unsubscribe them from all your lists. I don't want people that unsubscribe because apparently we're not a match. That's not a bad thing. It's not about that. It's not about me. We're just not a fit. And make sure that when someone unsubscribes, make it very easy for them and make sure you unsubscribe them from all your lists, like so that there's no email going out to those people whatsoever in the future. And I personally would even go as far as like also adding an unsubscribe uh, button to the very top of your email so that again, it's as easy as possible. If anyone thinks, oh, but I'm not into this, well, rather than clicking the spam button, just like having them make it very easy for them have them click the unsubscribe button. That's better for everyone. Now, besides all of that, obviously you also want to personalize things. Like the more personal it is, the more engaged people are going to be in. This is, can be done. This can be done in a very basic level. Just, hey, first name, we all do that. And just here and there in between the emails uh, as well, somewhere in the midst of your email, we'll go right down here, whoever it is. But also if you have other data about your audience and you're sending out a broadcast email, can you maybe use that? Like I've 
send out emails in the past where I'm using, for example, which country they're from, because that stands out, right? Like, how, is the, how does this work in Germany? How does this work in France? How does this work in the United States? Like, just making sure that whatever data you have on those people, as long as it's all good and legit, and, and obviously, uh, according to the privacy laws, use that information to make your emails more personal, which obviously goes hand in hand with the segmentation I mentioned before as well. And here's one that I think is going to be even more important going forward, especially in 2024 and beyond, is to get people to respond to your emails. Get people to engage. Don't just send out emails and hope they'll read it, but actually get them to respond. And the one easy thing to do is if you just have a lead magnet of some sort, rather than getting them to click on a link to get it, right? Just say, hey, I've created this thing. Just hit reply and let me know. And then if they reply, that's when you send out an email back, like here's the link to the thing that I created. So get people to reply because that organic, behavior essentially, which that's what Gmail wants. They don't just want an, a domain name where all that's happening from it, like sending out emails, but rather they also want incoming emails. So for example, if you already have a lot of emails going into a certain inbox, like a support email inbox, use that also to send out your email broadcast as well, because that's going to be completely organic because you send and receive emails at that domain name. Very important for Gmail. So there you have it, essentially some tips to improve your email deliverability. And really guys, like this is not something that you should just sleep on. This is happening in February. You need to make sure you are prepared for this. So make sure you set up your DKM and SPF records. Make sure that you monitor your spam rates. Make sure that you actually do everything that you can to improve your email deliverability, to make sure people engage with your emails, to delete the old email leads that aren't engaging anymore. And just be a good email marketer, essentially. Hopefully this video was helpful and I will see you in the next video.